Howdy. Recently, a lot of people have asked me about solar, and I really want to try to simplify the solar process for some of you who want maybe a very, very basic solar system. I'm going to insert a graphic. So really, that's how simple a solar setup can be. But to understand that, we need to understand one principle if we're going to combine multiple panels. And that panel supplies power to the circuit. So to understand that a little bit more simply, we're just going to talk about a battery very quickly and the difference of parallel versus series. So I'm going to use a multimeter to demonstrate this. So if I take one battery, which are rated at 1.5 volts, and I put this on the meter, you'll see it's going to be a little bit above that because it's a brand new battery, but at 1.68. And then if I connect two batteries, in series, which moves the plus on one battery to the negative on the other battery, you can see it has doubled the voltage. So that is basically series. We are doubling the voltage without changing the amperage. In opposition to series, this is called parallel. So in parallel, we increase the capacity or the amperage load delivered without increasing the voltage. So you can see I've just clamped a copper wire on both ends. And now if I put my meter on here, you'll see I get that same 1.68 volts that I originally got. So the main concept to note here is when we go in parallel, voltage stays the same, but amperage doubles. When we go in series, the voltage is additive but the amperage stays the same. We are currently replacing two older solar panels with three newer, higher efficiency solar panels on Otis. So this is why I'm kind of going through this perfect time to explain what's happening. So you can see on the back of any solar panel, it's going to have these listings about maximum power, open circuit voltage, maximum system voltage, etc. What we care about is this operating voltage and this operating current. So you can see if we round off a little bit, we're going to go 20 volts, 5 amps. Now that is under perfect conditions and you're never going to have perfect conditions. A perfect condition would be the sun ray absolutely perfectly perpendicular to the panel. So unless you have an articulating mount that's constantly tracking the sun on a perfectly no cloud, no haze, no mist day, you're never going to get that. Most of the time, you're pretty lucky if you get 85 to 88 watts out of a 100 watt panel. Because we have ours mounted flat on the top of Otis, we never even get that we might get 80 watts, which is totally fine. So when we talked about parallel versus series, these panels are gonna go exactly the same. So you're gonna see when these come, each one comes with labeled very clearly, plus and minus. So if we were to take a combiner and combine the pluses together and combine the negatives together and they make connectors that will do this, what are we going to get? We're going to get 20 volts because the voltage does not change when we run in parallel, but 10 amps instead of five amps, five amps from each one. And I'm gonna explain why this is important when we get to the solar controller. But if we were to take the one positive and clip it into the negative on the next panel, and then take the plus and minus from there, so we're getting negative from one panel plus from the next panel, now our amperage is going to stay the same, so we're going to stay at 5 amps, but now instead of 20 volts, we're going to get 40 volts. And when we go with higher voltage, it allows a smaller diameter wire to carry more current. You can think about a fire hose that's turned on really hard, and if you look overhead at your wires out there, they're 14.4, 28.8 kilovolt, very, very thin because they're really high voltage, so it doesn't take very thick wire. Now we could do this continually in what's called a daisy chain. So we have three panels here. We're gonna connect all three, which will give us about 60 volts, but still at five amps. And that is the crucial piece of the puzzle, as you'll see here in a second.
So you can see here, this is how we've reconfigured the system. I like to fuse everything. There's power coming from the solar panels, fuse. Power coming from batteries, fuse. <clears throat> I really like Victron Energy. There's a lot of stuff out there. Victron is great. This is the smart solar, has Bluetooth built into it. But you can see very simply, two connections for the battery, two connections for the PVs or photovoltaics, two connections for the load. The important numbers here are 7510. Because we're running all of these panels in series, we're going to have, like I just mentioned, 60 volts, but still only 5 amps. So you can see 60 volts is below the 75, 5 amps is below the 10. So if we're running even two panels in parallel, we might only have 20 volts, but we're going to be 10 amps, so we're running up against the capacity of this already. So this controller might work for one, maybe two panels in parallel, but it will easily work for all three in series. So not only can we use smaller wires, it just makes a smaller, more cost-effective controller work. This controller, I think right now on Amazon, is about $65. So this is not a super expensive setup. I have two 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate batteries currently connected here to battery. Again, everything is fused. And then we run everything through a Victron smart shunt so we can tell how much is being drawn, how much load is being created, etc. Here's some screenshots from the app on the phone. You can see it's connected via Bluetooth. One thing to note on this 7510 is it does have a maximum of 145 watts total. On this final screen, you'll see each day it is listed by bulk, absorption, and floats. You can really keep track of what your system is doing. Here's information from the Victron site. You can see for the small controller, you have 145 watts. Very inexpensive controller. If you move up one step, it increases to 220 watts for only a few dollars more. So that's a good value if you want to run multiple panels. All in all, to do a basic setup, you only need a controller, a battery, and a panel. As you can see, a starter setup is under $200. A good quality setup is just a little over $300. And one thing to keep note of as well is keeping those panels clean. I took these screenshots, as you can see from the time, only eight minutes apart, and you can see a vast difference in the performance when these panels are clean. I hope that helps. Good luck with your solar setup, and let me know if you have any questions at all. To make things, yes we really do. Let's make some stuff together you can join in too. Plumbing, screwing, fabrication, here and now across the nation. Oh, and you can make some cool things too.